Today we're going to look at really what is the story of the Bible. I love the Bible because it is one story that we get to follow through from beginning to end. The Bible starts with these two great creation stories that really just tell us what God's purpose for creation was, what God's intent for creation was and how creation is supposed to be. But the second of the stories, which we know is the Garden of Eden story with Adam and Eve, gives us a twist. Because in this story, there appears a tree. In fact, there's many trees, but there's two significant trees. One is the tree of good and evil or the knowledge of good and evil. And the other one is the tree of life. It's really interesting. Why did God put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil into the Garden of Eden. If he hadn't put it there, then none of this would have gone wrong. But that tree really symbolises our choice, our freedom to choose. It symbolises our free will. The really interesting thing is, Adam and Eve, they already had the knowledge of good. <laughs> They chose to also bring into themselves and into creation the knowledge of evil. The first few chapters of Genesis give us this repeated story of what we call the fall with Adam and Eve, with Cain and Abel, with the story of the great flood and Noah, the story of the Tower of Babel. It sets a pattern for us that we should really have picked up by now, that actually humanity, in the choice that Adam and Eve made, it corrupted things and it made us bad deciders. After the Tower of Babel, God says, well, I'm going to try another way to redeem everything that I have made. And he chooses Abram. And God sets this amazing redemption story into play. That through the descendants of Abraham will become a nation. And this nation will be a great blessing to the whole world. That story, of course, in the Old Testament is the story of Israel. But that pattern that happened so early in Genesis continues if you will, the Israel keep going back to the tree of knowledge of good and evil and eating again when they shouldn't. And we get this repetitive story going where humanity is faithful to God, but then we become unfaithful. When we're unfaithful to God, just as Adam and Eve were exiled from the garden, humanity is exiled from the presence of God. If you follow the Old Testament well, you'll see though that God in his mercy, God in his grace keeps forgiving Israel, keeps saying, just be faithful and you can come back to me. I'll allow you back into my presence. But the story keeps repeating. Faithfulness, unfaithfulness, grace, redemption. This story is hinged around one moment, and that moment is Jesus. All of the Old Testament teachings of the sacrificial systems really are just leading us up to understand what is gonna happen through Jesus Christ, through God himself as human. Because this whole story of redemption hinges not on humanity, but on God himself. It's not humanity's works that will get us back into favour with God, but it is God's goodness that will get us redeemed. The New Testament is obviously quite different from the Old Testament. It's different in style. It's different in the way that it's composed. But it's really different in one other way. And this big difference is that this redemption story, because of Jesus, 
who is the Redeemer, is now available to all people. Truly, it always was, but God chose Israel to be the mustard seed through which redemption would come that would spread out to the whole world and all people of all time. This, I think, is what we are trying to declare these days when we say that the gospel is inclusive. It means that the good news of redemption, the good news of forgiveness of sins, the good news of being able to go back into the presence of God is available to every single person. So we say that the gospel is inclusive. There's just one problem. That tree still exists. We still have choice. And it is for, for so many people, actually, that the choice remains not to partake in the story. It remains to continue in exile. It remains to not accept the grace of God as the redemption of their soul. So sure, the gospel is inclusive because the invitation to come and live in the kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, that invitation is utterly inclusive. but the acceptance of it is not. For some, it will be that exile does continue and it continues for all of eternity. The story of the Bible really ends exactly where it started. If you turn to those last few pages of scripture, it starts to talk about a new heaven and a new earth. There is a recreation of what was there and this time we have chosen to be in the presence of God. And funnily enough on those last pages we are reintroduced to the tree of life. The Bible story has taken us from page one, has taken through the four, has led us through a repeated story of faithfulness, unfaithfulness, exile, grace, redemption. That story continues until Jesus comes along and the story goes faithfulness, unfaithfulness, grace with a capital G, redemption with a capital R. And then the story continues with no more exile. And the last pages tell us that we're back in the garden for all eternity, right where we were supposed to be all along. This time we have chosen to be there so the tree of knowledge and good and evil no longer exists, simply because we have chosen to reject the knowledge of evil. I want to say one thing about the story of the Bible as well. The story of the Bible is not a story about you. It is not your self-help book. It is not a way or a set of rules to which you should live your life by. And if you do, you're going to be rich. You're going to be famous. You're going to be helped out of the situation that you're in. That's not actually what the Bible is. The Bible is about God. The Bible is about how holy God is and how we, his created beings, are offered the chance to be blessed simply by being in relationship with him. It is a story about God and God's relationship with his people. Christianity is a community faith. It is not about individualism. Now redemption has always been seen through community. We should have learned that from Israel and that community now has just grown. The Bible tells us that we are grafted 
into that sense of community redemption. That's why our mission is done as community. That's why our worship is done as community. That's why who we are, how we are identified, is not just as an individual, but as a family, as a church, as the body of Christ. The Bible is not at all about you. It is not your self-help book, but it is a beautiful, unified story about how God loves and cares for all his people. I want to say something about Jesus because actually quite common these days, what I hear at a lot and when I engage in conversation with people is really a confusion or they're not quite sure about why Jesus matters so much. The gospel is all about Jesus Christ. We can never work our way to salvation. Jesus bought it for us on the cross by paying the penalty that we should have suffered ourselves. There is a reason why scripture is so clear that the way to the Father is through Jesus. Now that's probably more complex than what I am alluding to right now. But I just want to point out that Jesus is king. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus reigns. The judge at the end of the days will be Jesus. Jesus is your saviour, is my saviour, is our saviour. Without Jesus, there is no kingdom. Without Jesus, there is no eternity. Without Jesus, there is no proper full relationship with God the Father or God the Holy Spirit. Jesus is everything. We have to know Jesus. Jesus is the hinge on what this story of redemption all pivots on. What is the good news? Why does the good news matter? And how was the good news made possible? Now, if you're not quite sure how, then my word, you're about to go down the most exciting journey of discovery if you start to look into it.